In this demo, we look at TLS bootstrapping a worker node, the worker2 node in our case. To enable TLS bootstrapping feature, you must meet two prerequisites. The first is to have the enable bootstrap token auth option set to true on the Cube API server. We can check this by running the ps aux command and looking at the Cube API server process. We see that it is enabled in our case. The next is for the controller manager to have the cluster signing certificate and key. Again, we use the ps command to list the controller manager. And we see that it's, it's configured correctly. Once done, we proceed with the bootstrapping process. On the worker node, download the required binaries for kubelet, kube proxy, and kube control utility. Then create the required directory structures and then move the binaries to the bin directory. Finally, move the CA certificate in place. Note that we do not have the kubelet certificate generated in this case. As discussed in the previous lecture, we must create bootstrap token to be used by the kubelet. So do this by creating a bootstrap token secret object. Then authorize the bearer of that token, the worker nodes, permission to create CSR. For this, we create a cluster role binding object. We can do this in two ways, either by creating a YAML definition file, the declarative way, or with a single command, the imperative way. We'll follow the imperative approach. Next, Authorize the worker to approve the CSR by creating another cluster role binding. And finally, authorize the worker to renew the CSR by itself. We then configure the kubelet to bootstrap. Earlier for worker 1, remember we created kubeconfig files with the certificates we created. Well, we don't have the certificates for worker 2, so we don't create a kubeconfig file. Instead, we create a bootstrap kubeconfig file with the bootstrap token we created. Again, you can do this with four individual commands, the commands that we saw earlier in this course, or you can just create the bootstrap kubeconfig file manually. It's the same thing. We then create the kubelet config file, which has information about the environment. And finally, we configure the kubelet service itself. We specify the bootstrap kubeconfig option instead of the usual kubeconfig option. We then configure kubeproxy. Kubeproxy is configured as usual. Once done, reload, enable, and start the services. Verify the state of the kubelet service. Ensure it is active. Let us now check the status of CSRs on the master. The client certificates used by kubelet to access the API server gets approved automatically. However, you can see the one for the kubelet server is in a pending state. Run the kube control certificate approve command to approve it. Verify the state of the nodes by running the kube control get nodes command. We have successfully joined the worker node to the cluster.